In this video, we're going to talk about joining processes, which most people probably never even think about. Like, why is it important to join two things together? Well, um, think about all of the innards of a product. For example, an iPhone. We've got all of these electronics that go inside the product. Well, once we have all of the internals of a product put together, you have to cover them somehow. And because of limitations with manufacturing processes, there isn't really an easy way to cover internals of a product with a single component. It's typically a kind of a clamshell. So you have you know two halves of something coming together and joining together and, uh, and covering whatever is inside of them. So um, when you have, uh, when you're thinking about joining processes, there are a few, uh, there, there are several options to consider, but typically you're taking two, two halves of a clamshell or, or two different parts and uh, holding them together somehow to protect or, uh, you know, hide what's, what's on the inside of that part. Um, uh, probably the most common and, and a very reliable method of joining two parts together is screws or fasteners and there are a lot of different types of screws and fasteners and they're great they work very well they're um, time tested they're uh, they're just a, a really solid um, a really solid solution to join two parts together one of the uh, the downsides with using fasteners is they become an extra part so you know, instead of just buying the two parts that you need to join now you need to buy the fasteners as well and then it's going to take someone someone working on the assembly line to actually install those fasteners and granted it doesn't take a lot of time to do that but it takes some time so the added cost of the the material of the fasteners and the labor involved in installing them that that uh, adds a little bit of cost to your product so in that sense they're they're not ideal but they are really great um, tools to use for for joining two parts um, another method of joining two parts and and this works well uh, in plastic parts but not not so well in metal parts is using snap pins or uh, what are called gripper pins and we won't get too much into the details of what those are but uh, they rely on the the soft kind of malleable flexible nature of plastic uh, to deform in ways that that allow two parts to be joined without the use of any additional hardware such as a fastener uh, that, that's kind of the strength of using snap features or gripper pins in your molded plastic parts is that um, they don't require any additional tools or, or hardware they're they're features that are built directly into the parts themselves and allow the two halves to be joined together. Um, a, a press fit is uh, a, another joining method, and uh, a, a press fit relies on usually, well, very tightly controlled tolerances um, and, and an interference between uh, like a pin on one side and a hole on the other side. And we'll get a little bit more into the details of that in some of our written literature, but um, a, a press fit is a, is a very common method of joining uh, two parts together. Um, ultrasonic welding is is uh, a, a common process that's used. It's maybe not as common as just using screws or, or snap features uh, or a press fit, uh, but ultrasonic welding definitely um, is is a process that you can use to join uh, certainly two plastic parts that's probably where it's most commonly used uh, I have read here and there that uh, it can be used on metal parts but I'm not really very familiar with that application um, uh, adhesive is something that can be used a note on adhesive uh, a lot of people especially people who are not really familiar with the field of product development might go directly to adhesives because it you know it seems simple right just apply some adhesive and uh, push the two parts together and, and boom you've got your parts joined well in reality adhesives are fickle and most product designers don't like using adhesives because they're fickle it's hard to get it just right it's hard to make uh, the process of applying that adhesive uh, perfectly consistent from you know part to part 
Um, so yeah, adhesives, they're, they're somewhat common and, and they're certainly used in industry, but um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of product designers, including myself, don't like using adhesives because they're fickle. Um, and then one of the last processes to talk about is, is just tape. Uh, and we're not talking about, you know, like scotch tape. We're talking about more industrial tape. Uh, 3M is a, a big company and they make a lot of products, but some uh, one, one category of products that they make very well are industrial, adhe uh, industrial tapes. Uh, sometimes referred to as transfer tapes, but uh, these are very, very strong adhesive tapes that will allow you to bond two parts together. So as a mechanical designer, it looks like I have two options that are pretty good. One of them is fasteners, like screws, and the other one is uh, the gripper pins, perhaps. So I'm thinking about the pros and cons of both of these. And if I'm going to do the gripper pins, I have to put them in the CAD model. So it takes time, more thought. But if I'm doing the screws, the fasteners, all I gotta do is basically just put a hole in the, in the CAD model. And I'm trying to weigh out in my mind, when should I use each one? Sure, yeah. Um, so one, one point is that you typically do add your fasteners to the CAD model as well. Uh, there are a few reasons for that, but for now we'll just say it, it is good practice to put fasteners in your CAD model. So you don't really save any time there. Um, the, I think the, the big difference between using screws or gripper pins is, is one, gripper pins only work for plastic parts. Um, you wouldn't use gripper pins in, in metal parts. Uh, and, and the other thing is that um, uh, assuming your part geometries will accommodate grip pins, because not, not all of them do, uh, but assuming your part geometry will accommodate gripper pins, um, uh, they're, they're a cheaper method of joining your parts. And, and it is a permanent joining. Once your gripper pins are set one side into the other, they won't come apart. Uh, those pins themselves will, will break off of the part before the interface between uh, the, the pin and uh, the hole in which it's pressed will, will fail. So they won't come apart if they're done correctly. That's correct, yeah. And that is, that is one of the downsides to gripper pins is they're, they're kind of tricky to get right. And uh, not all factories, not all molders have a lot of experience doing them, uh, doing them correctly. They rely on very tight tolerances and some tricky molding practices. Um, zero draft is, is one of them. Whenever you're injection molding a plastic part, you, uh, you, you want to put draft on it. And we get into the details of that more in some other videos and written literature. But um, gripper pins, you want to have zero draft. And that's tricky to do correctly. Uh, a lot of molders don't have experience doing that. so. Um, that's another thing to consider. If, if you have a molder who has done gripper pins and is really comfortable with them and you know exactly how to design them, then they are a, a, a shockingly strong joining process that just will not come apart. In terms of assembling costs, because for any inventor, any entrepreneur that wants to produce something, uh, the manufacturing costs also include the assembling costs. So if you put uh, gripper pins versus the uh, screws, which one has a lower cost to manufacture to assemble? Gripper pins will be cheaper because they don't require the extra hardware and they don't require as much time to actually join together. If you've found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.